children you will listen to your lesson now soon after your lesson is done you are required to do your worksheets you will find the worksheets in the ccf india website the link of which is given in the description below please click on that link and you would have the grade 1 grade 2 grade 3 grade 4 buttons click on the button as per your grade and download the worksheet and enjoy doing it Hi friends how are you doing today it is so lovely to see all of you so we are going to be learning about something very interesting and we'll see what the bible talks about it what the bible tells us about it let me ask you a very simple question do you recognize what is this You're right. These are our traffic lights. We find them on all roads in the city, right? Why are these lights constructed for us? What is the purpose of this light? You're right again. It is to regulate traffic. So the green light tells us it's okay to go the yellow light tells us to watch and go the red light tells us to stop now you would have seen these lights function perfectly well but just imagine if we did not obey these lights what would happen can you imagine the kind of confusion and chaos that would be on the road if nobody obeyed these lights why do you think these lights are there for us it is for our own well being to keep us safe and protected to prevent an accident from taking place now when we imagine that if nobody obeys these lights what would happen there would be accidents on the road people will crash into each other cars and trucks and bikes and other two wheelers and three wheelers everyone will be doing whatever they like they will be driving on the road not following rules mm -hmm. isn't it so these lights are there for our well being to keep us protected but the important thing for us to do is obey them right now let's see what is obedience what is obedience according to god's word I'm going to be telling you a story right now. A story from the Bible. This story is found in the book of Kings and Chronicles and the book of Chronicles which is in the Old Testament. The story is about King Asa. He was the third king of the kingdom of Judah. Now King Asa when he came to power after the death of his father he saw that there were altars all over the country worshiping other gods and he broke them all he brought them down he destroyed them and he turned the heart of his people towards the living god he did this by making the temple of god once again he told the people to worship the living god and him alone and so the people renewed their covenant with god and god was pleased with king asa and in return god promised him 
to give him rest and protection from his enemies. King Asa enjoyed 10 years of peace. No one attacked him and he was able to build his country. He made fortified walls around his nation, around the kingdom and he enjoyed a wonderful time as a blessing from the living God. After the 10 years were over, he came to know that he, his kingdom is going to be attacked by the Ethiopians. Now the Ethiopians were a large nation. They had many soldiers, one million of them. He was afraid. He didn't have too many soldiers. And instead of inspiring his soldiers and giving them a pep talk, what King Asa did was to turn to God and he begged him. He begged God and he said, God, you are the strength of the powerless and you are the everlasting help. And God heard him. God answered him. And by his help and grace alone, the kingdom of Judah was able to defeat the Ethiopians. They plundered them and they took away all their wealth and carried it back to their nation. And they were so grateful to God. Again, God blessed King Asa. Mm -hmm. He enjoyed many more years of peace from his enemies. Finally, in his 36th year, he comes to know that he's going to be attacked by the king of Israel. What does he do now? Instead of turning to God like he had turned to God and sought his help the first time, he turns to a man, the king of Syria. He takes the gold and the silver from the Lord's temple and as a bribe gives it to king, to the king of Syria, requesting him to attack the king of Israel and protect the kingdom of Judah. He ignored God. God sent his prophet to remind King Asa of how faithful and good God had been to him. Instead of repenting, King Asa put the prophet of the living God in the jail. Soon after, he developed a disease in his feet. He went to other prophets and he went to doctors, but he did not get healed because he did not turn to the Lord. He did not repent of what he had done. And finally, in his 41st year of his reign, King Asa died. He could have lived a life faithful to God, in obedience to God, but he chose not to do that. And that is the tragedy of this story. But this story serves a very important purpose. It tells us that when we obey God, blessings flow. And when we are disobedient, we are removed from God's presence. God loves us so much. He wants to guide us. He wants to bless us. And He wants to bless each one of us. And so, children, today we are looking at obeying God. Now, there are three parts to it. One, we obey God cheerfully, happily, not with a grumpy face, 
we obey God with a cheerful heart, with a smile on our face. Why? Because we know that in obeying God lies our true happiness. We second, we obey God quickly. We don't dilly dally. We don't waste time in obeying God. Now just imagine if your mom tells you to do something and instead of doing it right that minute, you do it after two days. Do you think she'll be happy? Obedience has to be quick. Right? The third, we obey with all our heart. And that is what pleases God. Look at the life of King Asa. Till he obeyed God, God blessed him. God gave him a chance to return to him by repenting. But King Asa did not do that and he died a painful death. So kids, let us not waste our time in obeying God. Let us do it with a cheerful heart, quickly and with all our heart. Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for the many stories of men and women from your word through whose life you teach us. We ask you to help us when we stumble. Help us to obey you with all of our heart, quickly and with a cheerful heart. Bless us, Lord, I pray. Even though many a times we falter and fail, yet your word says, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. We believe, Lord, that you will help us in our weakness. When we fail to obey you, you will give us the grace to obey you the next time around. Help us, Lord, that we may never forget the teachings you impart to us. We thank you, Lord, for your love surrounds us. We ask this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Bye, friends. I hope you enjoyed today's teaching. Take care, all of you. Dear children, I hope you enjoyed your classes today. I believe that you have learned something valuable and you were more wiser than before. Yay! We request you to please join us tomorrow again at 11 a.m. on the Way Bible School's channel to enjoy this camp. Don't miss fun. We remind you again to please subscribe to our channel and share it with all your friends and families. See you tomorrow. Children, if you don't make wise decisions, it will impact your entire life. So, isn't that careful thoughts is always important and it will help you to make wise decisions in your life? Yes, if you want to become wise and make wise decisions, it's always important to think right. So, let's ask God in prayer. Father, thank you for your grace upon my life. Thank you for this wonderful teaching today that you made me to learn wise decisions will help me to make right choices in my life and it's always important to think right so that I make wise decisions in my life. Lord, whenever I tend to make foolish decisions, let your Holy Spirit remind me that it is a wrong thought and help me to correct my thinking and make wise decisions. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.